Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that was a bit loud. Um, the main thing is you can all hear me. C can you hear me on this side? And can you hear me on this side? Great. And the main thing is that Estrella hears me too. Um, in the meantime, as I talk to you, and I want to demonstrate something with this little horse before we work with Esther, um, I'm going to just let Sarah warm up because she hasn't been able to ride until she came into this arena. And while she's warming up, I'm just going to have a little chat about why I brought Dobbin along. Dobbin's come down with me from Scotland, where I have my yard. And Dobbin is a normal horse. Dobbin is one of your everyday horses. And I'm quite sure most of us started our riding careers with everyday horses. And I love them to bits. So whatever breed you may later specialize in or prefer, I think we always have to have a soft spot for the everyday horse, don't you think? Right, now, the point of this is, I want to explain to you how a horse moves naturally. Because nowadays, we see an awful lot of horses not being allowed to move naturally. And the most beautiful thing in my mind about a horse is his head and neck. I think horses' heads and necks are fantastic. They are part of the great creation, and they are beautifully designed. Whatever breed they are, the head and neck is special. Don't you agree? So the first thing I want to ask you is to support me in the way I teach, which is classical riding, because I feel that a lot of the old classical traditions are being lost. And the worst of all, I don't really mind what people do with their horses. I don't mind what kind of saddle they have or what kind of rugs they put on or whether they believe in barefoot or shod. But what I really, really care passionately about is not allowing a horse to be a horse and not allowing him one of the most fundamental animal and human rights, and that is to see where he's going. A horse must be allowed to see where he's going. Now, you don't have to have a very long rein to let him see where he's going. You can ride the horse collected. I do quite a lot of collected work. I work my horses up to Grand Prix level, Passage, Piaf, even Levard. But my horses can always see where they're going. They never have their head or neck broken. They don't get their head pulled down. Because when you pull a horse's head down, it's very different from working him on a long rein. When you pull the head down with the rein, you break, or you will break down, a lot of the muscling and the ligaments that connect the horse from his hindquarters to his back to his neck. And the reason it's so important that you don't let that part of the horse get damaged is because of this. A, he will never move through the back correctly if those ligaments break down. And it will break down if you ride him. Where's his head gone? There. If you ride him like that with his head pulled in, he will break down eventually. He will not last you nearly as long as a horse that's allowed to look where he's going. So. By all means, have your horse's head in the vertical once he's at a certain standard of training. The horse can be on the bit, but never pull him behind the vertical. The only time the head should move behind the vertical is on the very long rein. Because let me show you something else. Just put his head back on. We'll allow him to see where he's going. Now look, when the horse's hocks are starting to move under him, which is sort of slightly further into the training of the young horse, when you start to be able to get him to use his back end more, what happens is this, the forehand lifts. So the head and neck actually come up. But what we mustn't do is immediately punish the horse by pulling the head in more. What should happen, once the horse is working through the back end, what should happen is the horse will begin to mouth a bit more, flex his jaw, and flex. I can't do it on him because we haven't got enough rivets. 
and I thought he might fall to pieces if I made any more rivets. But he will start, hopefully, to flex through the pole. If you have a kind, yielding, and asking hand, and persuade him that the bit is nice, not nasty, and train him to work more from behind, he will start to flex through the pole naturally as a result of the engagement behind. And once you've got engagement behind, the forehand will naturally lift, and obviously the horse's head will naturally lift a little, and there's nothing wrong with that. But today we're taught that the head must be halfway between the knees all the time. And I only do that when I'm doing the long rein work. So we'll put Dobbin away, and we'll now work with a real horse, and see if we can, at this stage of training, which is roughly novice to elementary, with Sarah and her delightful Spanish mare, we will see if we can keep Esther happily on the bit, but without pulling on the reins. Just a feel. And what I'd really like to do when I get on is to try to show you how to lighten the forehand, which will raise the head and neck, and that's not bad, that's good, because we get her more engaged behind. And the only way you can get the horse engaged behind is to do what we call the school exercises. It's what they do in every good riding school in the world, what they do at the Spanish riding school, what they do in the Portuguese school. And it's the work that trains the horse to come onto the bit naturally, not because you've pulled him in.